This would be better if I unmuted myself. So let's rewind a little bit and let's start this all over. Listen, Braden's not here. Now, Braden's not the one that presses unmute, but he would have been the one to say, Joe, you didn't press unmute, did you? And I'd say no. All right. Start this whole thing over again. Guys, welcome. So glad to have you guys here live. It's three weeks in a row. Uh, we're on some sort of record here, and I love it. If you guys are watching live, thank you so much for tuning in. If you're listening on the recorded podcast, I guess, are there live podcasts? I don't think so. But if you're listening on the podcast, this is a recorded version of the live Q&A that I host every Saturday from 10, and now it's from 10 to 11 a.m. Central. It used to be 10 to 1230, but we're compressing it a little bit. But um, yeah, so welcome. That probably wasn't as good the second time around as it was the first time, but I think I hit all the high points. If you guys have read the description, you know exactly who is going to be today's guest. And if you didn't read the description, as soon as I bring him up, you will know exactly who we're talking with today. The one, the only, Mr. Tony Thornton. Tony, how are hey, you Tony. today? Man, life is good. How are you, Joe? I'm doing well. I'm doing so well. If I could figure out technology, I'd probably be doing a little bit better. Hey, I was watching the video here, and I'm saying, okay, either my system is broke or he has not hit the mute button. <laughs> no, nope, Joe just forgot to hit the unmute button. That's I that's completely it. on me. <laughs> oh, Tony, how are you, sir? I tell you, Joe, it's uh, it's it's uh, been fun. You know, the last ten months and uh, life is good. Uh, you know, I took a leap of faith some ten months ago to. To follow a passion, I uh, thank the good Lord put me down this road, and uh, it has been a true blessing. It really has. Uh, you, I, I tell you, when when we had talked about it, and you had said after you'd made the announcement that you were doing, I was like this makes so much sense because you know you're someone when I'm when I'm telling people about a well-rounded fencing professional, you come to mind because you've worked kind of in every sector of the fencing industry. It seems like when at one point or another in your life. Um, it, it made total sense when you, when we had talked about that you were going to start consulting with other fence companies is like, well, I know in the, in the conversations you and I have, I always pull out one or two little golden nuggets and it's for you, it's conversational. Like you're just passing this <laughs> stuff out because it's, it's your experience. Uh, but for guys like me, I'm like, okay, hold on. I'm going to write this down. Could you say that one more time? You're like, well, no, I just said like, yeah, that's it. That's exactly it. You're right. Thanks. But um, no, it, it made total sense. And and for the last 10 months, you've been a busy fellow. We have. Um, again, you know, when we made the transition uh, from AFA, which honestly was one of the biggest blessings of my life, uh, you know, it paved the way for what I'm doing now as a consultant for our sure. professional industry. Uh, but yeah, for the last 10 plus months, uh, we've done 10 full consults. Uh, we've got two more to finish up by the end of the year. And then we threw in those summits too. So it yeah. has been a busy season, a uh, busy <laughs> year, but, uh, man, I've been loving every minute of it. I, I've been loving watching it because I, I get a kick out of it. So it, the stars haven't aligned yet for me to get to one of the super summits. And I always like, so I'll, I'll follow along your social updates. I'm like, Oh, I'm missing it again. I'm missing out again. We're going to touch on the super summits here in a little bit. Cause I want to dive into it. Sure. But one thing I want to, one, one piece of ground I do want to cover is you and I talked before the show that uh, a lot of the viewers are, are new into the industry or maybe not even into the industry yet, but looking into it. And it seems like one of the things you do really well is help people dial in a business. But I have to think that you also probably have some tips and tricks for someone just starting out in the business. Would that be right? Absolutely. So what, you what know, would you say? If, if we were to, if you were to pick out, and I'm sure there's a hundred things that you see happen, whether it's mistakes or tips and tricks, but if you were to pull out three, four or five things that you see guys consistently, either mistakes they make, or maybe it's stuff that they don't learn for the first year or two that they could, that could really help them jumpstart. What would those things be? Number one is knowing their numbers. Well, you know, all of us that's been in the industry for years know, and as when we started out, you know, if we got enough money in the bank account and we pay our bills this week and we make a little bit, everything is good. You uh, bet. But knowing your numbers and being able to budget properly, forecast properly, that, in my opinion, is the top one. Um, and we really deep dive into all of those pieces of the puzzle. We train our clients on how to do that. 
uh, if they've got a method or don't even don't even I mean, I've got people that don't even know what a gross margin is, you know, but we, we train them on that. Um, but number two would be the procedures and checklists. And okay. I try to impress on everybody that even if you're a one man operation with one crew, if you put the proper procedures in place, the proper reporting, the proper checklist, when you grow to three crews, five crews, 15 crews, 500,000, 1 million, 3 million, 10 million, you've got those procedures in place and you don't have to back up and punt. You're sure. already on the road to success, you know, through those procedures. I would say that that's the biggest piece uh, for most companies uh, behind knowing their numbers and knowing, you know, what kind of money money they're making. Um, number three, I'm just going to go ahead and throw number three out at you, and that's, you that's embracing business technology. Everybody wants technology, yep. Joe, but they don't want to take the time to do what's called the build out or the back door sure. you know, build outs and those type things. But those are the top three that I see out of the consults that I've done. And even before I was consulting for, Thornton Fence Consulting Group, you know, as a mentor and a coach, as my past life with executive director, you know, those were those were those were the same things that most companies were dealing with. Absolutely. I mean, the knowing your numbers that and that's not just guys that are starting out to your point like that. You can see that kind of throughout the uh, life cycle of a lot of companies. Um, and it's so true that when you're operating with one bank account, it's easy to look in the bank account and go, oh, well, yeah, see, there's money there. We're doing great. Well, <laughs> yep. that's what uh, happens maybe too. not. Yeah. Yeah. But it's we we had a gentleman on, it's been a little while ago, um, that wrote a book called Profit First for Contractors. And that's I love it. And that I'm whole thing that changed how we looked at our business finance. Uh, because yeah. it it gives you a whole look into exactly where your money goes and how much profit is in that bank account. Exactly. When you're looking at a number, and it could be a big, it could be a hundred thousand dollars. You're looking at that going, we've made it. Our ship yeah. has arrived. Like, well, <laughs> actually, a good a good chunk of that's for operating expense. Yep. Another chunk of it's for payroll. Is there actually profit in here? Right. No telling. No telling. But right. And and I'll be honest with you, Tony. Right now, we're in the middle of trying to figure out how to accurately forecast. Yeah. Um, we've we've always we've always kind of forecasted the next year based on historicals on just hey here's what we did last year and the year before in q1 let's add a little to it and that's our goal like well okay that's a goal but goals are very different than forecasts oh absolutely and you know when you're when you're talking about forecasting especially in you know what i call the volatility of the market we're still in that in that period of time oh yeah you know you go back to 18 and 19 and think about Ozark Fence Company and what you were doing. And then all of a sudden the pandemic hit 2021 yeah. and now going into 22. You know, yeah. I tell everybody, if you can't be in the fence business right now making money, then you might want to get out of the fence business. Okay? <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> yeah. at the end of the day, you you know, the, the reality is that 18 and 19 and how you need to forecast, you need to back off a little bit of what happened over the last couple of years in order to properly forecast, because you're not going to be able to maintain that, in my opinion. Right. I'm not an right. economist, but I study a lot, and I talk to a lot of good people in the industry that share their thoughts with me. And, you know, a big discussion right now is what is going to happen with our economy, you know, going into 2023, and everybody's kind of got to be on that edge. There is a recession. It's already occurring in some parts of the country. Uh, yep. It's not as bad as a lot of people thought it was going to be right now, sure. but the outcome is still to be determined. We don't know. Uh, and it's all going to have to do with inflation and, and continues and, 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 you know, interest rates and everything else that's going on. So a, as a company owner, okay, you and all the other professionals out there have got to take that into consideration when you're doing your forecasting, back off a couple of percents, you know, I want to, I want to grow mm -hmm. 1.5. I want to grow 2.2, whatever. Yep. Those type of things is what's important to know is, you know, be conservative. <laughs> sure, sure. Well, and, and I think, yeah, absolutely. You made a good point there. When we're looking at historics, we're starting at 2020 now because I I firmly believe people's buying habits changed. People's finances oh, yeah. obviously changed. Mm -hmm. We've got data back into the 90s, but that doesn't. I don't, I don't think that apply. It's a good look at how we've grown and, and what sectors we've grown in, you know, in residential yeah. versus commercial versus retail wholesale. 
But if, when we're trying to forecast, I don't think those really play a role at all anymore. I think 2020 is kind of the dividing line of, <laughs> Everything changed. Like we live in a different world now than we lived in prior to 2020. Uh, and and that's kind of scary because before we could always look at historical numbers and kind of know like, okay, well, like the big thing for us is that we look at election years. What have yeah. we done in election years? What have we done in midterm years? What have we done? Because those are, they're kind of good indicators for us. They but, are. But when you have to start at 2020, you don't have very very much data to to no. go on there. So a no. lot of it's a lot of it's lear- relearning kind of what we knew, I guess. Well, and that's why I, why I say you know you, you can you can forecast, but be conservative with those forecasts. And if you exceed your your expectations, and you're you know you're in great shape, but yeah, don't set yourself up for failure. You know, and putting too much out there because uh, again, we're still in that volatile uh, period of time. Oh, and the, next, the next six months is really probably, in my opinion, going to tell us, you know, how things are going to look for 2023. Um, well, the the wild card is always what they call consumer sentiment. Like how <laughs> the people that are buying, like how they feel about life in general. Exactly. What is a consumer sentiment? And you can't, you can't forecast. You can try to guess at it, but you can't forecast it. And that, that is the whole game of figuring out, well, not only what will the economy be doing, but sentiment says, how will people feel about how the economy is doing? And those two things are, are really different you know, too. You hit, you hit something on the head there. Um, I'm always been one of those individuals that if I want or I need, I'm going to get, okay. I sure. don't care. You know, if it's summer, you know, we're going back to school, we got vacation, uh, you know, an election year, a mid year. I don't care. I mean, I, I'm that guy. Okay. I'm just that optimistic guy that, you know, I'm only going to live life one time and I'm just going to do what I need to as long as I can afford it. Right. Sure. But yet there are a tremendous amount of people, uh, you know, that just worry and get really fatigued over my gosh, what's going to happen. You know, I got to yeah. store my money back. You know, sure. I pick on my father-in-law. My father-in-law has the first dollar he ever made. Okay. And he's 80 <laughs> something years old. All right. Yeah. And honestly, but that was the time back then, right? You sure. had to pick back, and that was his era. So you got to look at every little, you know, period of time as to how people react to to what you said, and yeah. also those uh, are all over the geographical area may be a little bit different, you know. Sure. There's hot spots of people that just spend money like crazy, and there's other spots that just hold on to that because they're worried. Well, you know, and there's also, so my company is based in the Midwest and, and we are somewhat sheltered from the highs and the lows that we see on either coast, right? Just yep. by nature of where we are, I suppose. But the problem is, and that used to be good. So we didn't see the huge highs, but also mm-hmm. like 08, 09, the housing, we didn't see that big dip either. Now yep. we saw a dip, but it wasn't yep. catastrophic like what we saw in other regions of the United States. The problem is now everyone has access to all this information and they assume. So someone here in Springfield, Missouri sees that some sort of collapse is going on in Miami, mm-hmm. just for or wherever these, these big areas. Um, and they assume it's coming to their town. And yeah. so then, like you say, so their spending habits shrink up and say, Oh my goodness, things are collapsing on the West coast and this and that. And like, well, <laughs> <laughs> it's a different world. It absolutely, it you know, it's just a different, different world out there. Cause I mean, guess what? Houses here, like this is a conversation I have and it blows people's minds. So we also have some rental houses and we, we build rental houses and I can build a three bedroom, two bath house, two car garage, really nice for about $120,000, $130,000, depending on fixtures and finish. Yeah. Now it used to be a hundred thousand dollars, but yeah. we all know what happened. But then you talk to someone over on one of the coasts and they say, well, you couldn't build that house for any less than half a million, 600,000. Like, so, so that's kind of the reason why you see these massive ups and downs because right. on either coast, just because prices are a bit higher out there and life is right. different when you get outside the Midwest. But yeah. I, I tell you what, my life got a lot better when I stopped watching the news. I'll tell you that much. Uh, I did the same thing. <laughs> Shut it down. Uh, you know, if, yep. if there's a, if, you know, 
I looked at the, you know, the Ukraine uh, Russian war, you know, sure. just kind of updated on it on the front end. And then I shut that down. But I'm like you, Joe, man. I get up every morning, you know, and whatever I got to tackle that day, I'm going to tackle it. And I don't worry about yeah. what the news says or what the, somebody says or predicts, you know. <laughs> yeah, we, I, I told my guys this. So the, the last Friday of every month, we have a big lunch and everybody mm -hmm. gets together and chit chats. And then uh, one of the things I had said, I think it was month four last, I was like, guys, gals, you've got to quit watching the news. Because because questions were coming like, hey, are we okay? Like, is business okay? Are things slowing down? We're hearing like the economy is going to just shut down. And this is like, whoa, 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 I have seen nothing to that effect on our end. Yeah. Call volume, top of the funnel, call volume leads or anything, much less through the yeah. funnel. So yeah. in the funnel, several months long, right? So I know right now for the next several months, everything's peachy keen now. Exactly. Anything can change day to day, you know. It, it's always subject to change, but but you know, you you just you just made the statement that I first brought up, knowing your numbers. Okay, you're, you're yeah, reading yeah. your reports, you're reading your numbers, you're understanding your numbers, and now you can give your team members a good report. Hey guys, sure. we're financially stable, we're in great shape. You know, yeah, there may be a little bit of a downturn, but don't worry about it. We're in great shape. Leads are up. You know, sales are up, conversion rates are up, all of these reporting pieces that if business owners would open up and have those conversations with their team yep. members, uh, yep. all that does is build retention. You know, those guys it, trust it you, and stay with you. And faith. They, yeah. Faith in that I'm going to be here for you because I've got yep. this stuff. I'm figuring mm -hmm. this stuff out. You know, and mm -hmm. just to roll back to the profit first, like we have a payroll account. So I say, guys, gals, we've got – four months, five months of payroll socked away. So if we did nothing for the next four months, we've got money to keep everybody paid. Now, yep. that's not taking into account us lowering profit margins, us going and buying some work to right. keep everyone paid. So we could stretch this four months of payroll out to the next year if we yep. really if we really needed to before yeah. any sweat gets dropped, right. right? Before we start sweating anything. Right. Um, it, right. And when I'm talking to company owners, not just fence company owners, but can, company owners in general, like there's still a lot of hesitance to, to open books and to share finances with the team members. Cause like, well, my thing is I want everyone to know when I was a kid. So when I was growing up in this company, um, there was a the whole sentiment of like the boss makes a dollar and I make a dime, right? Because they'll see, they'll see work orders that have totals on them. Like, oh, are you yeah. me? We just <laughs> yeah. made th these guys four thousand dollars. Yeah. How much? How much did you get paid? Well, I know what I got paid. We're getting paid yeah. pennies on the dollar compared to what they're getting paid. Yeah. Which is is their truth. It has their perspective, right? That's, That's what true. they see, but they don't see that material account materials. They know their payroll numbers, but they don't think about well. There's actually payroll taxes that the company pays, not just that you pay. And there's insurance and there's like, you know, so by opening up the books, by yep. showing kind of, hey, guys, here's where the money goes. Exactly. The trucks out front that are wrapped, somebody paid for that, right? That's the right. lift that we like to use to unload trucks, exactly. that costs money. And, and we're not saying that in a boastful way, but we're just saying, hey, guys, here's the top line number that you guys see. It's a good one. I like guess something yeah. to be proud of, but- yes. There's a few numbers under that that we need to go through before we get to the bottom number. And that's kind I, of where you know, it, I, I'm, you know, me, I've y'all heard me say this. I'm a pretty simple minded guy. Okay. Sure. So when back in my early career, early thirties, when I own my own company, uh, you know, I'd have people say, well, you know, Tony, it seems like you're making a bunch of money. Well, let me show you. Okay. Here's what we got, you know, to go to the grocery store and here's all the things that we're buying from the grocery store, and this is how much we got left. Does that make sense now? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how simple-minded. But I opened up the books the first year when I started hiring employees, and honestly, I retained employees because, again, they trusted me. They had faith in that we were doing well. Uh, they knew exactly what margins we had to make to keep the doors open and flip the switches, and, yep. and they knew that they were going to be in good shape for a long time. But it's to your point, it's cost of goods and expenses from that revenue – in order to make that net. And a lot of people just don't know what's going into that. And well, yeah, you got to really realize it. You do. 
Yeah, and, and but they come by that honestly. You know what I mean? Like, there's no one that has malicious. I don't know, but no, most most folks don't have no. malicious intent behind those comments. No. But when no. you don't have the answers, you tend to imagine the answers, right? Yep. Like you try to figure it out in your mind. You're like, oh well, I bet what's happening is X, Y, and Z. When that could, mm -hmm. couldn't be the furthest from the truth, but you don't know because you don't have that information. This is true. This so is true. it's there. There's a hundred ways to. There's a hundred ways to skin a cat, right? There's all these different ways to run a business, but with transparency is usually the best, you know, yeah. at least sharing with them on a quarterly basis. Hey, here's what's going on. And it, it's, it's part of the culture, you know, right. and we, we preach culture more now than we've ever done, you know, in our yeah. lifetime, but that's yeah. part of the culture. And, and, and again, your, your, your employees appreciate that. Your team sure. members appreciate that. And that culture just, again, retention that's what we're looking yep. for i want to retain yep. these good ones okay that's right you know, and, and i'm one of those hardcore guys i'm gonna get rid of the bad ones <laughs> well and and when they have a voice in these conversations it also provides ownership right yes. of the hey guys here's our goals mm -hmm. what, what are our thoughts like I, i'm willing to take thoughts on this condense them down and then kind of make decisions based on that. Yes. Um, but it all, it lets them have input. It also lets them see what the vision is. Yeah. Right. Like if they know where we're going, they know where they're pulling to, right. That, Hey guys, this is our goal. It's a buy-in, you know, like yeah. all the consults we're doing, we do a strengths, weakness and opportunities, you know, assessment with their key exec team. Mm -hmm. And when we mm -hmm. do that, you know, and, and, that, and these guys, I tell them, look, just be brutally honest. Tell them exactly what your thoughts are. Your name's never going to be in a report. Okay. It's the team, you know, says that these are our strengths. The team says these are our weaknesses, our challenges. And you would be surprised at, you know, how these guys will open up. But sure. then once we go and have that team meeting, uh, usually that third day, and we talk about this as a whole, those guys are buying into what the goals of that owner or owners are trying to do by bringing a consultant in, talking about what needs to be done, fixing these issues, because every one of them honestly sees the same thing that the owner does. We got to fix this. You know, we got to sure. challenge here. We got to we got to do better there. And then when you ask their opinion, they share their thoughts. We put it on paper. We collectively talk about it. It's a true buy in uh, process and it's building a strong culture for a company. I like that so much. It, it just gives greater understanding. So buy-in is important, but also just general understanding of the process always yeah. helps too. We, yeah. I had a conversation like that with one of our team members that was asking for a piece of equipment. Okay, but you understand like how that impacts bottom line. So does it increase productivity? Does it increase efficiency? <laughs> Can we justify it long term, or is it is it a want or a need? Yeah, right? exactly. like is, is it a nice to have? Because sometimes those are okay, but us looking into the uncertain future, maybe today's not that day. Maybe we wait till things get a little bit rosier for uh, for once for nice to haves. For for, for some of those uh, team members that are in the know, especially on the higher end exec team that knows the financials. Okay, the question I used to throw at my guys was: If you own this company, would you buy that? Would you if, if you you were if you own this company, what would your decision be? Yeah, that really changes their perspective sometimes. Sure. You know, sure. Oh, if I own the company, eh, I can probably get by without it. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course, because that's and, and they come by that honestly again. I you know it. what I mean? Yeah. They yeah. it it's just a different it's a different thought experiment yeah. of like yeah. if this came out of my pocket, is it really important or yeah. is it and again a nice to have? Yeah, this is true. So systems and processes, I think, I think these are incredibly important. And to your point, they're easier to implement with one employee with you oh, yeah. than they are with a hundred employees. Like I always try to think in extremes to like, is this worthwhile to take on? Yeah. Well, if you've got one person, you two, two people, yeah. you and a helper, is it going to be easier to implement than if you have a hundred? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Because then you can create it and then hand it off. Yeah. And, and, and that's really what Thornton Fence Consulting Group tries to do uh, through the summits, through the training, through phone calls. I mean, people, I tell people, you don't pay me a dime if you want to talk, you know, until we enter into an agreement. That's that's when we'll talk of money. Sure. But this fence line of success, it's all about the procedures. These are the procedures. OK. And I tell everybody that attends the summits and or I do consults on is that if you build the procedures, 
this is what the successful companies in the industry are doing. These are these even 2 million, 5 million, 10 million, 20 million a year companies because they have a streamlined procedure. They got checklists. They train their people. They set the expectations and they hold them accountable. And the owners are on the beaches of Florida reading reports every Friday, just saying, hey, guys, we've got to do a little bit better on this. Sure. But we are totally focused on the procedures of every aspect of your business. And that's where, again, after your numbers, this is where the biggest challenge, the biggest weaknesses for even existing companies that's been in business for years uh, are, are still challenged with. Well, and is I don't I'm a firm believer that the work's never done. As far yeah. as that goes, as far as systems and procedures, you can always, you can always be, be honing that, you know, you can always be making it better. Um, uh, but the, but getting started is the hard part. Yeah. Right. That when it's, it's like, it's a, it's an inertia thing. It's always harder to get that ball rolling than it is to keep it rolling and maybe to speed it up. You know, Joe, one thing that I've noticed out of the, um, 12 consults that we've done this year is the willingness of the owners to say, Hey, I need some help, you sure. know, because we're men, we run in our business. We know what we're doing. We don't need any outside input. Right. But when you take that outside input from those individuals that can help you better understand, and we're doing that through mentoring and coaching, your show's doing it. Everybody else is doing it. Um, you know, but until those guys accept the fact, you know what, somebody else may have a little better perspective or a little better idea. Let me go get their, their thoughts. Sure. Because sure. they don't have to do it, okay? I'm, you know, it's right. not like we're twisting their arm, or you know, you know, we're going to find them because they're not doing what we tell them to do. But that <laughs> conversation really opens up when a business owner accepts the fact that you know what, I could do better, and I need sure. some input, and you know, there's some people out there in the industry that can help me, and well, and that's that's the bottom line. I, I I absolutely agree. And I think the turning moment is when you understand and you decide that you don't know what you don't know. <laughs> true. True. Like that there there's a wild world out there that I don't have any idea about. Yeah. And and how many times have you been in a conversation, Tony, with two or three different fence companies that all have a similar problem? They're all talking about their solutions, which are similar. I it, this is kind of overarching theme in this discussion is everyone thinks they've got the secret the secret sauce to this or that, the other, they're all pretty much the same. Yeah. Right. The but, secret sauce is they've all got the same problem. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. It, and they all have solutions, but they can learn from each other's solutions too. Yes. They can take yeah. their foundational solution and build upon it. They're like, Oh wait, mm -hmm. Oh, no kidding. So you found a way to improve this thing I'm doing. Now, maybe I'm not going to do it the same way because my business is different. My geography is different, but yeah. I bet I can do something similar to that. Yeah. That's, I think that's mass. It's, it's a massive change in thought, right? When you can get to that point of saying that, that Tony, you and I can have a conversation and we don't have to agree. We don't have to agree on the solution to yeah. a said problem, but yeah. we can both probably hone our, our solutions based on the other systems. Yeah. This is true. And I, I've seen that, Joe, with every client that Thornton Fence Consulting Group does, we do uh, every 35 days, we do an accountability call with the whole client group. Okay. okay. So I've got, you know, 12 people on a Zoom call and we, we tune in on one or two things that I know that all of them are challenged with. Uh, but it's surprising to see how, you know, a guy in Houston will make a recommendation to a guy in Richmond, Virginia or Richmond, Virginia say, wow, we tried that. It didn't work for us. But, you know, how are you doing it in Tulsa? That conversation, it's almost like a, a, a you know, a think tank. Uh, yeah. And it's not always Tony say, hey, here's the recommendation, because we're all in it together to try to have, you know, find that success. Uh, sure. It's unbelievable. Yeah, I, I like that a lot. So you're building community. I yeah. mean, is, is what you're doing there and mm -hmm. the community is helping itself like yeah. within the, within that community you're building. Yes. Like that a lot. Yep. The third yep. thing you hit on was, was software technology, right? Yeah. Which you know, everybody, everybody has QuickBooks or, you know, some form of accounting yeah. and they think that's the technology that's driving their business. But, <laughs> you know, we've been introduced to such, to such great products over the last few years, more so than in my whole lifetime, in the fencing industry, you know, there's workflow capabilities, there are estimating yeah. capabilities, there are pre-qualifying capabilities. And if you build these pieces 
to you know give you a a procedure that makes it more efficient we're going to increase our profitability and we have truly been blessed with some great products over the last you know five years agreed uh, so you know that's the biggest challenge with the third in my opinion the third biggest challenge for these companies they all want to embrace it oh yeah i need it but all they want to do is push that button and make it work sure so, sure you know build out you know i mean you think about technologies that you've introduced okay the owner yeah. knows what needs to be done but now you got to assign yourself that time close your door to build out the technology and that's yeah. that's the challenge with most of these guys uh we we both have good friends that 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 run business technology groups and they'll say man yep. we've had this guy on board for six months he's paid us you know 100 bucks a month and he ain't never done nothing with it you know yep so, yep yeah, because he's waiting for it to get slow Lisa, that, that that was always our thing. We're like, you know what? Yeah. Oh, when it yeah. slows down, I'm gonna jump right on that. And it, it never does. It never I, does. I really drill home with our our clients and, and even phone calls. People call me all the time. Say, hey man, what technology are you recommending? Well, it depends on what your company looks like. You know, what sure. do you actually need? Sure. Uh, you know, I'm a Ford guy. Well, you know, this other guy's a Dodge guy. You know, I mean. Yeah. It, you know, and there's opportunities for everybody to evaluate different products that's going to fit their particular niche their needs yeah. and uh it may be a combination of a couple and another impressive thing that i've seen over the last six months is the integration partnerships that are occurring you know yes. we yep. never saw that 10 years ago five years ago i got my own little world over here i don't need to tell anybody else to know about it you know well uh, and, and we we get to be we feel a little bit about we feel a little bit like frankenstein right that that you're taking these different pieces and you're kind of piecing them together and it, and it integrates it. Well, it used to not integrate, but you would like find ways Zapier. We were, we were massive as Zapier because it would help try to connect the dots. But, and then in the end you had this monster, you had Frankenstein's monster of like, it kind of looked right. And it kind of worked right. But yeah. now, now you are seeing people integrate. You know, we we yeah. talked with Rachel with my salesman last week yeah. about their integration with Job Nimbus, with just all of these companies, and, and they've got some more coming, you know, down the line that yes. are huge. That well, we've got a virtual assistant right now whose job is to well, was one of their jobs was to take the information from my salesman, enter it into Job Nimbus, enter it into oh, Company God. Cam, things like right. this. Well, now. Okay, so my salesman is integrating with Job Nimbus, who also integrates with Company Cam. So now all of this is happening seamlessly. Now, when I was I, Mark Olson was at our, our training. Now, there are two Mark Olsons, and I am not going to get into the debate of, of <laughs> hey, Job Nimbus. Funny. Mark, we'll say the first time I saw both of those guys together. One of them had a shirt on that says on his sleeve it says I'm the original Mark Olson. I'll let you pick out which one it was. Okay. But I, I, I have I, a feeling I know which one it was. Yeah. That what that told me was he was older than the other one. <laughs> right, 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 right. Well, Job Nimbus Mark and I were talking that I was telling him this. So he was he was presenting at the Springfield State University, and he was like, you know, and I told him this. We've got a virtual assistant. One of their jobs is to do this. He goes, well, I hope we're not putting somebody out of a job. I'm like, absolutely not. Like no. we we've got some higher level stuff that they could work themselves up into. Now yes. that we're freeing up, you know, 10 hours a week is kind of what we peg this at, that they're spending building all this stuff out that now happens near yeah. automatically, right? Like it happened, there's a process, it integrates now. So yeah. we could free them up to do higher level stuff that now oh, can absolutely. happen just seamlessly. Absolutely. Um, so, and, I, and I'll share, you the, share this with you too. You know, another real strong program that's coming on uh, with our industry is ArcSight, uh, you know, the, yeah. the, the yep. draft estimating and i've partnered with uh arc site to build out what we call the thornton fence consulting group template okay so now we're, we're building the basics we're doing i'm doing the back door okay for basic residential chain link black vinyl basic wood you know vinyl and iron and aluminum and that way they've got a starting point and, and an education process where they can say oh wow this is pretty easy i can do it now i can build my custom wood i can build sure. my custom designs but you know again the the biggest challenge i saw was these guys not wanting to do the back door work so i've yep. taken it upon myself to, to begin that process well there's a and lot there there's a lot work, there that workflow that just worked 
works right into, you know, the job Nimbus workflow procedure yeah. processes. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a, it's a seamless process now that everybody is talking and everybody's integrating. And yeah. I couldn't be more proud of our industry of, of working together to help our fence professionals, you know, do a, a better, more efficient job. Sure. And so full transparency, we're, we're onboarding with ArcSight, right? Well, we have been for the last few months just because it's, it's a process. Now it's, it I don't is. want to that it sound negative, but they're, they oh. want it dialed into each company, right? Is, so they will give you the building blocks, but you do need, need to kind of assemble them in a way that makes sense for your business because, exactly. you know, my assemblies are going to look different than your assemblies are going to look yeah. different than somebody else's. So, but to hear you say that you're, you're kind of creating the, uh, you know, the, the starting point, the template, maybe um, that's huge because that could take several months worth of work and, and understand I'm not talking about months of dedicated work. I'm talking that Sarah here is, is as she has an extra hour, extra two hours here and there, she's pushing that rock further on down the road. Right. Um, but yeah, so it sounds like you're going to save some people some time, uh, some serious time, which uh, would be nice. We, again, you know, my passion has always been to help. My passion's always been to improve our industry. You know, I think you've got a term, you know, everybody rises the tides, rises the yep. ships. It, it's yep. that's the scenario. Yeah, rising tide think, raises all the ships. Exactly. Exactly. We're all in it together. That's right. Well, and we're all getting better together. You know, yeah, that's absolutely. that's the thing. Yeah. Now on the other end of the spectrum, <laughs> this is this is a company we're we're both familiar with. R Rachel was on last week and they're their software is kind of a bit of a unique software in that it doesn't take a couple months. And this isn't a sales pitch. We're not sponsored, but I'm right. telling you, my experience right. was they get set up quick. Well, example in my business, real example is we had stain and fence building on the same quote tool. Now, what ended up happening? Not a lot, but once a month or so, someone would choose fence staining thinking that they were getting a fence bid. Mm -hmm. Well, they say, well, they're going to come build this fence for $1,500. Right. Bad news. Right. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's not it. Now, if you yeah. get a fence built, I will come stain it for that $1,500, but that's not the fence building bid. Right. And it, didn't, it didn't happen enough, but once a month or so yes. to where is. So we reached out to Rachel and said, hey, can we do, can we build out a separate staining tool? Yeah. Or, you know, quote tool. And it was yeah. done like that day. Well, and I don't want to speak. It was done fairly quickly. It may yes. not have been that day, but it was done very quickly, ready to integrate, ready to put it onto the website, that sort of thing. Um, right. I like them a lot. I really I do. Like, I, I love them. They're great folks, and a, it's a great tool. And when and when we talk about pre-qualifying, there's not a better product out there, in my opinion, uh, because it, it, it just it, – I call it the tire kickers. You know, I don't want to drive that, that truck over there to a tire kicker's job. And they say, oh, it's, that costs too much. You know, we sure. can do all that sure. pre-qualifying, and this uh, this product will do it for sure. Oh, absolutely. Well, that's what the products do, but, you know. Uh, well, yeah, there, there's obviously others. This is just one that my business uses. Yeah. Um, you know, so – and I'll tell you, I shared this story with the Springfield Training again, is that – so we used it as our pandemic right. response plan. So we weren't able to do face-to-face -face business. We had been right. using this tool as an accessory in the past, but it right. wasn't a mandatory part of the process. Right. Well, then all of a sudden we were told, now this was before even the six foot rule came out. We were just told like you and I could not meet in person, no matter yeah. like what the distance, it just couldn't happen. Right. So we needed a way to where we could still, now we could still go install fence. It's outdoor. So yep. indoor was restricted. Outdoor wasn't really. So we could still go conduct work, but we had to get that project sold first somehow. And I was like, wait a minute, we have a tool right now in our software bundle that we can sell work. They can see exactly where it's going. They can pick out the type of fence. They can pick out multiple types of fence. Hey, what's a yep. black coated chain link versus an ornamental aluminum versus an ornamental steel? That's we can right. do all of that with the tool. And then we, through Job Nimbus, we could then send virtual contracts, uh, electronic contracts where they could electronically sign them we could send an invoice that they could pay online we could do this digitally and get around this pandemic these pandemic rules yep. and it worked so well that we just haven't stopped using it like that oh. is our plan moving forward is it works and because we went from four or five quotes a day when we're driving across town to meet with somebody during peak yep. season, I'm not saying we do this all year. I wish we did this all year. But during peak season, we can do 10 or 12 a day. So Absolutely. we doubled mm -hmm. our output. 
And mm -hmm. now these leads are already pre-qualified. So it's not just 10 or 12 random appointments wow. a day. It's 10 or 12 pre-qualified. They've seen the numbers. They know roughly where we're going to come in at. So it, it made us incredibly more efficient. So, and, and, and you also saw a conversion rate increase too, improve too. Absolutely. Because these guys know it's in my budget. All we got to do is now fine tune it, get the pencil sharp, mm -hmm. I, I tell them. But yeah. at the end of the day, these guys already know approximately how much money they're going to spend. They wouldn't be interested right. and say, hey, come out here, Joe, give me an estimate if they didn't know. Okay. But also, it kept that guy away that says, you know what, that's way more expensive. And when yeah. those guys call up, you know, that's when you say, well, did you know that Ozark Fence offers financing? Let me tell you uh -huh. where I find it. Uh -huh. you know? yep. So yep. It, it's a great it's pre-qualifying is the only way. And we used to do it on the phone, right? I mean, in sure. our early career, that's the way we used to do it on the phone. We ask all yeah. those questions. So. Well, yeah, on you know, Mr. Customer, on average, our fence costs from X to Y. You know, does that exactly. sound like something that's within your budget? Like that is the word track that we would try that's to right. use to whittle it down. But you know as well as I do, the answer goes, uh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just come on out and measure it and let me know. And then you get there and they're like, Ooh, boy, that was that was expensive. Like, well, wait yeah. a minute. And, and yesterday we talked about how expensive it's gonna be. That 150 foot turned out to be 25 foot too, right? <laughs> <laughs> it did too. Well, while you're here, <laughs> well, get, give me a bid on all of it, but also give me a separate bid on this little piece with a gate. Yeah, this, this is what I really want, right? Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yep. But anyway, but no, but my salesman's right here in that there are tools out there that are pretty easy to get going. They are one of them because they do yeah. they do the hard work for you as far as programming. Now there is some input you still need to put into it. They don't yeah. know your prices, right? Then they shouldn't know your no. prices. You don't want everyone, yeah. but you can you can type it in and go from there. At, at so. the end of the day, our fence profession, whether a startup, mid level, or already doing 10 million, 20 million a year, you've got to embrace technology and you've got to invest right. in the time to make it work for you because you're going to increase right. profitability by doing so. That's the bottom line with technology. Absolutely. Well, we have on our PL, there's a line item for software expense. It's a big enough expense to where it needs a line item yeah. and it should. And we're tying it as a percentage of revenue. Yeah. So that as we, we know, as we grow, we're going to need to scale out software to help us grow there. So then again, rolling back to projections. Okay. Well, if we're projected to bring in this much, well, this is how much we should expect to spend on technology and technology yeah. can be anywhere from sales to operations to accounting. We've talked about, it can be any one of these, but it's important yeah. enough to be a separate, separate line item. That's good stuff. Let's do this. Tony. Let's roll through here and say hello to a few people. We haven't done that yet. Jonathan wow. says, good morning, fence friend from Northeast Ohio. Uh, he's in the cold weather. <laughs> he is. He's used to cold. Stevie Boy Billings is here. Good morning. Good afternoon, Joe. I always forget Stevie Boy's from across the pond. So it's afternoon there. Good afternoon, Stevie. Roger says, uh, good morning, Joe, and the rest of the fence fam. And it looks like Tony Thornton. Right on the head. It, it, it does look a lot like Tony Thornton. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Six Rivers Fence says, good morning from Idaho. Good morning, Six Rivers Fence. I uh, saw some of their work on uh, one of the Facebook groups. They do some pretty sharp work up there. Yeah, I saw that. Caseric Distributors, Christopher, good morning. Good morning, Joe and Tony. Watching from Philly. I, uh -huh. Christopher, I don't mean to brag here, around. but Christopher gave me a tour of Philly that included some uh, pretty, pretty solid Philly steak sandwiches. So. Ah, I will forever. We don't have Philly steak sandwiches here, Christopher, but if you'd like to come by, I'll take you to some cashew chicken places. That's something we're known for. <laughs> Martin Lee says, hey, Joe, all the way from Durham, UK. Wow. Very good. Very good. Welcome, Martin. Thank you. I appreciate it. Speaking of software, Finch Genius says, always appreciate learning from both Tony and Joe. Very much appreciated. Again, talking about technology that's making companies more efficient. Yep. And then we ran into the mic issues. Martin was first on the ball. I thank, I appreciate. I'm not going to read all of them. There were a few of you that were trying to let me know, and I was just blissfully ignoring the comments while I was giving my intro. I was only Jeremy like 20 of them. them. <laughs> What's that? It was only like 20 of them. It says oh, Mike. <laughs> I know. I should have paid attention. I, I love it. Uh, <sighs> yep. Yeah, Mike, Mike, no audio. 
Uh, Stevie Boy says, Martin Company, Durham is the northeast of England near, near, near Newcastle. Very okay. good. Very good. Um, no sound. Well, but then we got the sound going. Sounds okay. And then Nick Madison. Good morning, Nick. Nick says, hello. Oh, no. Whoever Joe Good 42 is said, your live is gone to be ruined. Well, I hope not. I hope not. All right. We won't let that happen, Joe. We, no, we're too we can't. Optimistic. <laughs> we, we can't. We can't. Roger Bencourt says, let's not forget to hit the affirmations. That's right. The like, the, you know, what, like, the love, whatever it is that's on your preferred Thank platform you. of choice. Give us a something like that. Uh, speaking of a um, Titan in the industry, Dan Wheeler says, Fence fam, excited for this one. Two leaders in the fence trade. Well, at least one. We've got Tony here, but... Uh, Oh, no. Got to see Dan a couple of weeks ago. I went down and uh, interrupted AFA University for a few minutes. Got to visit with him just a few minutes. He was an instructor, but uh, yep. good to see him weeks ago. Great guy. If you guys are into listening to podcasts, which I hope you are, and if you're listening to this podcast, you should you check can. out the Fence Industry Podcast by Dan Wheeler. Now, Dan's intro used to be the first and only podcast for the fencing industry, but he had to change it because there's a few others okay. now. But he is and will always be the first podcast for the fencing industry. This is true. Vero Fence and Deck, good morning. Have a great weekend, all. Good morning. Have a great weekend. Todd, so Todd's got a good point here, Tony. So Todd says, control your growth. I, I think that's a fair point. I think uncontrolled growth is just, just as dangerous, if not more dangerous, than no growth at all. If you're letting this thing get wildly out of control, it can really get sideways on you. That goes back to number one, knowing your numbers, right? Yeah. You got to control yeah. that growth by knowing what reports and things you're needing. You know, a, um, a target yep. at the end of every week, you better know what your numbers look like to be able yep. to do and that. on forecasting. Yeah. And that's, that's, hey, if we're way above forecast, why? Like, or if we're selling a bunch, that's great. But are we selling it right? And can yeah. we put it in the ground? I are mean, we making enough profit? That's the question we got to ask. Right. Right, right. Because we can solve the other problems. We can hire, well, yeah. within reason. We can hire, we can do all this. But if we're not selling it right, you know, if we're not, this if we true. don't have enough money at the end of the day, then we're pretty well sunk anyway. This is true. And then he goes on to say SWOT analysis. So we love SWOT. So SWOT analysis, strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. We like to look right. at these quarterly just to kind of see yeah. where we are, where we are. And it's good. So this comment came in, Tony, when you were talking about sitting down with all the team saying, hey, you know, yep. I like I like your your point of this. is Your name's not going to show up in a report. You're you know, I'm just taking the group's feeling as a whole. But that's really what you're doing, right, is you're mm -hmm. doing a SWOT analysis, uh, an anonymous SWOT analysis from the group. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Exactly. Like it. We know these guys, too. Stain and seal experts, professional wood care. Welcome, everybody. Now, good morning. Says, good morning, Joe and Tony. Now, I have a feeling this isn't Caleb because Caleb is in the Great White North at Fence Armor. Well, I don't know about right this second, but I saw that he. I saw on my Facebook feed he was there this morning giving a talk. And that oh, might have okay. been. Yeah, it might have been delayed. I'm not sure, but fairly yeah, certain he's in the Great White North. All right. Aloha Fence says, Aloha from Heber. We're about a month into pink collars, and, they, and they're pre-qualifying with my salesman and plugging leads into Job Nimbus. Highly efficient way to do things. Great I like job, that system guys. a lot. Great job. Yeah, I like that. We work with pink collars. Great group of individuals. We like them a lot and can't recommend. Yeah. When I say VA, I am speaking about pink collars. Like it's, they're kind of – it's – Virtual assistant isn't the only thing they do. That they're basically our call center. But anyway, mm -hmm. pink collars is the way I feel like. Yep. I bet you know this guy, Randy Ward. Great job, Hello, guys. Yeah. Thank yep. you, Randy. Hello. Good morning. Somebody else we know, Sean King says, "What's up, guys? Good hey, morning, my brother. Good, morning. Good to see you." So, here's the thing: is we say an hour, and here we are at 54 minutes. So. Good chance we're going over an hour, Tony. Is that okay? We got some room That's here. Fine with me. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Because I, I want to talk man. about we, we've got about through about half of what I really wanted to cover. Um, but let's talk about so you offer different services, right? That's I, true. I think, and anyone involved in the fencing industry already knows this. This isn't super secret. But 
One, the first thing I want to talk about is your this the super summits. Um, I've been trying to get to one. I haven't been able to get to one yet. And so I sit and I watch on Facebook and LinkedIn. I you know from the sidelines, wishing I was in the game. Um, tell me a little bit about super summits. What are you guys up to there? You know, the whole goal of the Super Summits was to give the fence professional an opportunity to come in and have training from what I call zero to maximum profitability. Um, we've designed and built and, and written content, uh, you know, from, uh, you know, for what we call fence line of success, from how to run your business, from every different aspect. Uh, but those Super Summits have been super successful. Uh, right. We had, I think, uh, almost 20 at the first one. And then the second one, we had 10 contractors. Um, and each one of those left with the valuable, you know, uh, information and access to all the instructors and, and, and the team, the community that we built there. Uh, I'm excited to tell you, Joe, on your show. OK, so here it goes. Okay, all right. The Super is now turning into the Super Summit Tour for 2023. OK, going OK. Six, six summits, six Super Summits ranging all over the country and i'll throw out these cities right quick okay just so everybody get a tickler but denver colorado in february uh cincinnati ohio in april salt lake city in may uh dallas texas in june we're also going to do one in houston in june we're going to do one in minneapolis september and then of course we're going to go back to shangri-la in august august 13 through 18 a whole week long and we're oh, going wow. to change the for the Shangri-La from Super Summit to the Ultimate Summit. Okay. And we're going to be All right. Training to uh, the Ultimate Summit that uh, people have been asking about regarding consultative sales. Okay. Uh, so you heard it on Joe uh, <laughs> Joe Everest first, man. This is breaking uh, news next year. Yep. Well, that- people are just Tony. We need you to come to us. So that's what we're doing. We're going to go to them. I like that a lot. Well, and, and also give people just more time to get to you. I mean, that was kind of that was kind of the point. My problem last year is I had conflicts with both the weeks. I'm like, yeah. and I can't move them because I want it. Listen, Shaker yeah. Law is about an hour and a half down the road from me, maybe two hours. <laughs> Ride your bicycle. It's over in there, my man. backyard, <laughs> and it is a heck of a venue. I we, oh, we yeah. do the AFA oh. Midwest events there. Yeah. yeah, it is so nice with the anchor, the whole anchor. I don't even want to call it the, the building. It's a whole like anchor complex they've got there. Uh, yeah. Really well done. So I, I'm yeah. glad to hear there's more dates available. I'm going to try to get to the one in my backyard, but if nothing else, we've got some more dates to work with. You got it. You got it. So, yep. so yep. Shangri-La is going to be like kind of the pinnacle event. So it sounds yep. like you've got the tour and then they all kind of lead up to the pinnacle event at Shangri-La. Absolutely. It's called the ultimate. We're going to change it to the ultimate summit. So I matter of fact, my, my good friend, Sam Nutella.com, he's rebuilding yeah. the website next week. He and his team and all of this is going to be up on the website uh, pretty soon uh, with a registration link for all of these. I'm working through the contracts now for all the venues, but I've already got the dates on paper. Uh, nice. and, and we should be able to find a hotel, you know, in those particular venues uh, to be able to support, you know, uh, uh, you know, this, this training. So we, we feel like, and we want, you know, I, I'll take as many as a sign up, but we feel like it's going to be a smaller setting, you know, 10 to 12, sure. you know, but we can, we can host as many as, as we need to. Sure. Uh, we've sure. already learned that. And we're, well, my past experiences, we can do that. Well, and I have a feeling it's like a lot of things. Once word catches on of how valuable these things are, you'll start seeing that crowd grow by quite a bit. Yeah. Now yeah. Todd, Todd would well, like to know if you're thinking about anything in the Northeast. We have. We've actually talked to some people. Uh, I'm actually going to be doing some training for the Jackpot Show. Uh, that'll be held uh, uh, next Atlantic year. Uh, so that's in the Northeast. And I'm mm-hmm. actually going to be doing three training sessions for the Jackpot. Okay. And then uh, Fence Tech, I've been requested to do three training sessions there. Nice. Uh, so kind of kind of spreading spreading out the training, you know, through some other opportunities. AFAs, you know, uh, asked me to come in and do that for those sure. two, two uh, locations. I'll tell you something I'm excited about, too, that we're going to do next year. And this is kind of my good friend Luke Gibson says this quite often. See a need, fill a need. And um, basically, uh, we're going to do a gate operator troubleshooting boot camp. uh, The middle of next year. A lot of good stuff on training how to design. A lot of good stuff on training how to install. 
but nobody's really tackling the troubleshooting challenges that our gate operator professionals are having out there. And with my relationships with the manufacturers, I believe we can build a good, you know, a procedure, a good uh, overall uh, look at what troubleshooting for gate operators will all, uh, be. We're going to do that in the right. Dallas-Fort Worth right. market for sure. Uh, that content is being drafted at this time. Uh, so we're going to be bringing a lot, of, a lot of things to the table. And, of course, we can't forget our Fall Fence Forum. That's already right. on the books for Worthington, Indiana. And then uh, we've also got some other training that we're thinking about and doing, along with all the consults. I, I think I mentioned <laughs> to you, Joe. I yeah, think, we I, haven't know, even gotten I've into already that got yet. To, Here's my board over here. I'm still old school. I haven't got it in a workflow electronic database yet. But my like board it. says I got 14, 14 consults on, on paper already going into next year. So no, it's going to no, be a busy like, year. It sounds like it. It sounds like it. It sounds, it sounds like that plane of yours is going to get a few hours on it. Hey, I've been using it so far. <laughs> I saw that. I saw that. Hey, so let's let's dive into it a little bit. So we talked about the Super Summit, now the, the Ultimate Summit. What's the difference between Super Summit or Ultimate Summit and a consultation with Tony? Sure. Uh, and, and it is a very distinct difference, okay? So the summits, the training is the fence lines of success, okay? And, okay? and a lot of people have seen the book, okay? I mean, that's 300 pages of content from zero to maximum profitability and everything you need to do to, to build a successful company to be efficient and profitable, okay? Okay. And there's 15 different chapters in this book, okay? So wow. that's the 10,000-foot elevation, I like to call it. Sure. But yet, you know, if XYZ Fence Company said, look, Tony, I would really, really have a one-on-one -on -one personal consult, what we call a business analysis, and we go in and we evaluate four specific areas, management and leadership, marketing and sales, uh, operations and workflow, which is the biggest challenge, and then yep. efficiencies in the installation. Those are the four categories. But we start with a huge survey, a four-page survey. It tells me what the personality on paper looks like for the company. And then from there, we set up a Zoom call. And from there, we start talking about the strengths and weaknesses with the owners is what they see, goals and objectives. So we set aside okay. three to five goals and objectives, specific in the weeds. We're no longer at that 10,000 foot. In the weeds, you know, look at what we're going to do. And then I come in and do a three-day evaluation. I interview all of their exec team, key employees. We talk about strengths, weaknesses, other things. Um, we do a workflow process. If nobody's ever seen a workflow, you know, from the time the initial call comes in, what steps are taken to hand it, you know, sales. Uh, office has got to hand it to sales. Sales has got to hand it to operations. Operations has got to take it back to the office to get billing. We work through the whole workflow process of those four period, uh, four, you know, procedures, I guess is the best mm -hmm. word. And then we find the hot spots. And I got a red magic marker, and I'm saying, guys, y'all are killing yourself right here because yeah. those dominoes aren't falling. You know, those dominoes sure. have a gap here, and you got to stop and go back here to get up here to not keep keep those dominoes falling. So it's a real in-depth, focused on goals and objectives that the owner and myself put together, and that's in the weeds on those particular issues. And every one of those so far has really been around the procedures, the checklist, and what they've got to do, uh, you know, to get more efficient at the well, end of the day. So there's distinct differences there. Absolutely. And I love that you point out it's three to five. Like, we're not trying yeah. to solve the company, all, every problem in the company. We're going to look, what are your top three hits here? If we can hit these three topics, is that a yeah. win for you? Um, I like that a lot. It, gets, it sounds like it gets really specific. And, and, now, and also those consults, the clients, okay, turns into an accountability call with everybody, you know, on a call. Right now I've got 12. As this continues to grow, we're going to have, looks like we're going to have, you know, 24 sure. <laughs> in short order next year. But we have an accountability call where everybody's sharing, you know, like a think tank. And it's amazing, um, you, know, um, you know, what we get out of that. Over and above that, you know, once you sign that agreement, you get – me for one year okay i mean if you have anything that's focused on those goals and objectives that you're going down a different path or you can't figure out we you know pick up the phone let's talk and also yeah. do one-on-one -on -one with every one of my clients to say how are you doing and more than anything else that report that i write joe mm -hmm. under those four categories it's got little boxes in front of every recommendation it's called accountability boxes and tony's calling you every 30 days to say hey have you put any checks in boxes Oh, no, I hadn't had time. 
well, how do you expect us to achieve the goal and objectives there? Yeah. So I'm I'm trying my best, okay, like professionally it. trying to hold these guys accountable. Now I have to fuss and cuss at a few of them, but you know, <laughs> uh, it, it, it's been fun, and sure. and, and they love the accountability too because as business owners, you know, we got it all figured out, right? Right. But if you right. really got somebody that says, you know what, I like this, you really need to push my buttons, you know, you need to you need to beat me on the head with a two before every now and then. Yep. I'm willing to do that. So um, that's the big picture, you know, from what a true one-on-one consult looks like. And well, accountability is huge. I, I think the account- accountability component of that component yeah. of that alone is massive because, I mean, here's the thing is I, I, I'm in the business. I understand that time slips away. Yes. You look at a calendar, you're like, well, I'm sorry, what? Yeah. it's the first of the <laughs> month again? Now I'm looking at a calendar going, yeah. wait, yeah. we're almost done with the year? Like hey, you, realize, you, you realize Christmas is in five weeks, right? <laughs> I mean, Tony, on. it was great having you on. I really appreciated <laughs> that. My wife reminded me of that last night. You realize Christmas is here, right? I was, oh man! Oh, uh, what? what happened? You know, I thought I just retired. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the point, right? Is we get so into the business, we do. and I really feel like business owners kind of need to have that focus. They need to have the blinders on so they can focus on their business. But every now and then you do need somebody to say, hey, 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 another month's gone by. We're not making any progress with this. Or are we? Maybe we are. And maybe we need to adjust. But that's right. It's huge. It's huge. It's huge. Yeah. Alan Boulding's here. So Alan was just in for some training. Alan, welcome. Good morning. He says, one day I'm going to hire Tony Thornton. Hey. Yeah. Hey, line us up a hunt. I may may work cheaper. (laughs) (laughs) To work out a trade. Work out a trade. That's called a barter. <laughs> <laughs> you bet. You bet. Tony, you got a few more minutes. We'll watch this week's video. Get your feedback Absolutely. on it. Okay. All right. Let's see. Let's see if I can figure out technology. Okay. We're off to a good start. All right. So today we are going to Billings, Missouri. It's like half an hour away from where we're based. So this is this is Braden. So if you watch any YouTube content, most any of our YouTube content, it is Braden. Also, so Braden rolled out shorts, a bunch of short series with us this week. If you watch a short series, that is also Braden. He is a rock star. Good stuff. In Springfield. And I'm going out with Victor and the guys to install some. I don't even know what we're doing, to be honest, but it should be fun. I don't know. It should be a good time. Sounds like a fence guy to me. <laughs> yeah. Is he, well, this, this is Brett, and he's like, so this happened because we're every Tuesday morning we have a, a content meeting, and he's like, I want to go out on site and build fence. Who's building fence where? And we we threw out some ideas. He's like, Billings tomorrow, done. He's like, what time do what I need do? to be there? About, about sun up. This crew, you'll see in the video, they work sun up to sundown. Perfect. He's like, send me in that direction. Give me an address and I'll go there. (laughs) Some 10 foot wire. The guys didn't slack around at all. By the time I got there, they were getting everything set up for today. They were using Ozark Wireworks wire and apparently really liked it. Link in the description, by the way. Now, some of the first wire we made at Ozark Wireworks. Now, it wasn't the first installation. The first installation of Wireworks wire goes to Dan Hardy with Hardy Fence. But okay. This got installed about a week after Dan's. Right off the bat, there was a problem. Whoever had tried to fix the fence before had welded on the cross brace. The crew was planning to move each of them into a better position. Now, this is on me. So I went, so when my dad was in the hospital for a little bit, this is, he started this project. uh, Then I took it over while he was in the hospital. I, we had an onsite meeting and I did not go and look to see if these braces, I assumed they weren't welded. We didn't do the backstop. I didn't install it. So we assumed we could move these braces up. I didn't do my due diligence. And the crew says, hey, by the way, did you know those were welded? Ah. Hmm. No, didn't uh, didn't know that at all. But they just have to make do with what they could and figure it out on the way. Now, the backstop was 20 feet tall, which means the guys had to use two 10-foot rolls to be able to reach the top, obviously. Now, it was a little tricky, but they were up to the task. Using some banana clips, you can find at ozfence.store. Some 
Victor and Abe and the guys did a great job problem solving and getting everything done in a nice timely manner. They got the whole softball field done and they also did some pickleball courts off to the east side. It was a long day, but it was a good day. Pickleball courts are a thing. Like we we have done more pickleball courts this year than I think we have probably ever done. And yeah. we keep getting calls for it. And so this is probably a tip is if you guys get something. So when we saw like our second or third one come across, we said, okay, we need to develop like some standard plans for a pickleball court. Like what, it, what does it take? What are the, what are the requirements? Cause each one's a little bit different, but now we can go in. If somebody calls up and says, Hey, we've got a pickleball court. Like, okay, great. Here's a standard set of plans for a pickleball court. Let us know if this works for you. And if it does, we've already got the plan. I know roughly Perfect. what it's going to cost to build no matter. I mean, we have to factor in travel or whatever else, but yeah, tons of pickleball courts. Yeah. I'm seeing an increase all over the country. <clears throat> and the big thing right now is, is uh, they're taking tennis courts. So you can take a regular tennis court and make it into two pickleball courts. Yep. It's a thing. Oh yeah. Also, I asked Abe if he had any closing thoughts and I told him he could say it in Spanish or English. So if you speak Spanish, this one's for you. Estamos haciendo una cerca en Billings, Missouri, on a baseball field. You can see them. You can show them. That and the baseball court. Um, yes, yeah, we're fighting with Billings. So, thank you. Bueno. And that's right for now. The guys did a good job. We got to come back and replace that because we didn't have the right fittings. To be fair, the reason we didn't have the right fittings is because we weren't supposed to replace that. They, uh -huh. we were gonna, we were supposed to do the wire, then they were just gonna take that down, and then we showed up. So this city was trying to do as much as they could with the budget they had, right? So they had their people do the removal of the old wire, do do as much as they could, and we said we we would come back and help them with what what they needed. We got there, and that was still up there. We said, now wait a minute. That overhang, you said you didn't want it anyway. You, you, it rarely gets used. Da, 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 you didn't want it. Well, here it is. Like, oh, yeah, we figured you guys could just throw some more wire up there. Well, we can, but we need to know. Yeah, yeah it's a change order. And we need to know before we go out here that you guys are wanting this done. But That's funny. It's but how it goes. Other than that, it's good to go. Looking good. They actually weren't quite done yet. So even though it was getting late, they stayed longer to finish up the pickleball court. And with that, another job well done. Thanks to the guys for taking the time to get it done right and making sure everything looked great. Now, so one thing I like about the guys we've got is that, so Billings is, I don't know, a half hour. No, it's probably 45 minutes away. And they said, they're like, hey, we've got an hour's worth of work. Does it make sense to drive 45 minutes home and then 45 minutes back to wrap up work in an hour? Or do we just work an hour and get it done and, and they'll be okay with the overtime? Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Fast forward to Saturday and we have Wingapalooza, one of Sertoma's biggest events of the year. But before we can do that, we have to set up some safety guardrail. All right. So it's Friday. We're out at Wingapalooza setting up. Now, Wingapalooza we're involved with for a few reasons. One, we are the co-presenting sponsor this year. Next year, we're taking over the presenting sponsor role of Wingapalooza here in Springfield. But we're also, as you can see, providing the temporary fencing, both pedestrian barricades and taller six-foot construction fence, uh, both for some security and outdoor to uh, keep a smoking area contained. We started at the edge over there the last time? Yep. And then yep. came out and... Did one out? Yeah, we over. did one out. And okay. Over and then yep. The main concern is just keeping space between the crowd and like the sound system and the stage and all that. Yeah, so they, they really just want to limit access into here and on the stage and yeah. in front of here so they can just kind of walk through. Because what we saw in years past is we'll try to reach over and set drinks down. <laughs> so keep it keep it away from that. That way we're not, yeah, not spilling know. stuff. I will always put you. Oh, can you make it in? Oh, oh, sorry. I can't tell you how many times that gets done in a day. Like, up, oh, almost, almost. No, nope, not enough. This can be the entrance. Okay. Yeah, because I was surprised at how much money sits in those sound booths. 
Like they, there's six figures worth of equipment that sits in one of these. Yeah. So we, we have done the, they had done it with curtains in the past, like, uh, you know, trade show half four foot tall curtains. And, um, they had people setting drinks and spilling drinks. I said, Hey, could you bring oh, yeah. out some, some barricades? It's like, actually we have some of these pedestrian barricades that would work out really well. The bicycle, yeah. bicycle rack type ones. Yeah. Once it's on there, the other one can sit on the ground too. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that should be fine. Sandbags are the worst. Dude. When you flipped off that thing, the muscular wind got standing in my face. Don't grab that. Don't grab that. My ship! Look at that. <laughs> It'd be a shame if somebody just... <laughs> With all the shenanigans out of the way, it's time for Wing Up Palooza. So we sponsor this event for a few reasons. One, uh, so Springfield Sertoma is a group that I'm involved with that raises money for children's charities. Um, so like, di and they have to be local charities. So like Diaper Bank of the Ozarks, um, there's a, a victim shelter called Isabel's House. Uh, Boys and Girls Club, everyone has kind of heard of them. Uh, they're local chapters anyway. But also, so it's a good, it's a good, uh, the funds are going to good places, but also 6,000 people show up for about four or five hours. So it gets us in front of 6,000 people for around a buck and a half a person. So if, Mark, we're, if we're talking about. Good job. All right, guys, it is. Sad. So this is, <laughs> so Braden's like, I don't know if I've actually seen you in a shirt that's not orange. Like this, this seems odd to me, but. It is what it is. Saturday, about 15 minutes before these doors open at 11 o'clock. And when these doors open, it really gets rocking. Everyone was having a great time and enjoying the wings and the good music. But no wing of would be complete without a wing eating competition. Oh, my. All right, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We are underway. These wings are some of the hottest wings. I and I'm not a big spicy guy, but um, it's still like it. It's so hot, it like burns your mouth almost immediately. Um, so did you compete? No, no, absolutely not. Uh -uh, <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. I I have tried some of these wings in the past. Like after, no, uh, -uh not a chance. <laughs> Wow. So this is one of those things there's cash and prizes up for grabs. What's crazy, so this guy on the left in the black is uh, the reigning like champion, but the guy in the Hawaiian shirts won in the past. There was like four past champions like on the same, which is kind of rare. Usually we'll have one or two and a bunch of new folks, but this is <laughs> there's an impressive lineup here. Which is another reason I didn't compete because I've seen how fast these guys clear through wings. Like I would be through like two of them and they'd be done. Got it. It's a dozen yeah. wings. You got to eat it. You, the bones have to be clean and the mouth has to be empty. It is wild. Come on, we have a loser. Let's hear it for these guys. <laughs> So he won again. It was such a close race. So the guy right there, that was a champion the previous year. And that wing he's holding is all he had left. <laughs> so he had that show. little really bit left race. on the it wing. Awesome. It was oh, better man. than you could ask for, even if we staged it. So it was great. It was a good time. So there's more wings, there's more music, and then Joe got up to speak for the check ceremony. 8,000 pounds of wings. Whoa. That's a lot of wings. That's a lot of chicken. Funny. Also, sorry for the audio quality. It was really noisy in there. What is up, everybody? Appreciate you guys coming out. John's not going to brag on himself, so I'll brag on him for a minute. So in, in this, in this to give context, so John uh, is with a, a, uh, an auto dealer group 
called Youngblood. They do, they've just got a bunch of different automotive places. Uh, also, they do RVs. Anyway, so they've been sponsoring this for like 10 or 11 years, but this, um, they're, they're kind of changing, they're kind of changing what they do moving forward. So they, uh, they had reached out. I'd wanted to sponsor this thing forever because I see how many people get there. I'm like, I want to yeah. be part of this. And anyway, so this is kind of the, the torch handing ceremony or something like that. This is the 11th year that Youngblood has been a title sponsor of Bring a Palooza. Now, Palooza Prince has a pretty big shoes to fill because Youngblood has been giving, as long as I can remember, to Wing a Palooza, but not only Wing a Palooza, but to the community. John, for Mozart Prince, we want to thank you as just being a pillar in the community and being a great example. <laughs> If you're still watching, I can tell you the secret code word for this week is hardware. Now, that brings Wing of Palooza to a close and another week here at Ozark Fence. Thanks for watching and see you next week. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. Braden does great work. So we ended up raising, um, so we got the numbers back. Well, the numbers aren't final, but the numbers as of right now, uh, net $87,000 we raised oh, for just stuff. area children's charities. So it's, and it's a heck of a good time. Like community is. engagement, man. That's that's part of what every fence company should be part of. I'm telling you, I love that, it. That's the thing. It, it was it, there is an advertising component to it. Obviously, it's how we justified the expense. But then yeah. it's also well, Sean King's watching. So he is he says all the time, take care of your team plus one, uh, yep. and that that's plus one can be plus one could be the entire community. Like try that's to help, true. try to help everybody out. You know, and and my granddad had this philosophy. He's like, listen. Like we need the community just as much as they need us, right? It's like we we need to be, you know, cohesive. We need to be a cohesive unit. That a stronger community means that we'll have a stronger business to hand off to future generations. So, right. you know, a, a lot of times, um, a lot of people, I don't know, they they, they view that differently, right? They yeah. they view it differently. Mother Teresa said once, like we can all do something. Yeah, like whether it's whether it's a four hundred dollars sponsoring like some kids little league team, uh, or it's you know this was a we we give to Sertoma mid five figures um, just to just to help help the community get by because like I said so the nice thing is so we use them as kind of a clearinghouse for our charitable giving That's because good. it's like once once you start you get on a list i think like a donors list somehow you you don't you give to a few different groups and then all of a sudden it's a revolving door of mm -hmm. and and they are all they all deserve the funds i right? don't want, want to minimize this like it's if i could give to them all i would but we can't and right. like we need to organize this a little bit That's uh, right. so the sertoma group they have a charitable foundation where they they kind of review, they do grants once a year, they review this and, and they kind of make a decision on who gets what. Okay. So we let them, we, we give to them and then let them kind of be the clearing house of funds, which Sweet. works, works out pretty well. Works out That's pretty well, stuff. but, but you know, help the community how you can, like I said, it could be a four or $500, you know, and, and actually baseball softball teams are much less than that, but <laughs> yeah, every, everyone can help somehow. You know, that's yep. the thing. So, Tony, thank you so much. We are about a half hour past our one hour uh, goal here, but um, I appreciate you giving so much of your time because I know that you are a busy, busy fellow. Oh, it's all good. You know, we, uh, we, we've been doing this for a while now. And at the end of the day, you know, uh, you, myself, and several others in the industry, all we're trying to do is, is, is you know continue raising our professionalism level uh you know giving back to a, a, a you know to an industry that's been good to me yeah. um I, i'm 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 exactly where i need to be in life right now doing what i'm doing and that, that's right. the beauty uh, of what i say life is good you know and i and i praise god for that so thank you for the opportunity to be here of course explain to the listeners what what Thornton Fence Consulting Group is, is is all about. And if we can ever be of any service to anybody, support to anybody, www.fenceconsultinggroup.com is our website. And Tony at fenceconsultinggroup.com is my email. And y'all know my cell number. I've been telling you this for <laughs> 10 years now, 972-533-3658. And Joe, thank you, my friend. Tony, I really do appreciate it. Let's have you on before the Ultimate Summit to talk a little bit more about that and how preparations are coming along for that. We'll do it.
All right, guys, I appreciate you tuning in. If you're watching us live, if you're listening to the podcast, I appreciate you listening. Uh, you should tune in with us any Saturday, most most Saturdays from 10 to 11 Central. I'd love to have you guys here live and read your guys' comments live on the show, uh, comments or questions. Anyway, guys, for now, I'm Joe Everest, the fence expert, reminding you that good fences make good neighbors. And I'll see you next time.